Hi, welcome to the breadboard and what we're looking at here is my Raspberry Pi Model 4 that I've been using for a little while now for some of my videos and reviewing some of the high resolution um, screen adapters that we've been doing from old laptop screens and stuff like that. One of the problems with this though is that CPU now that it's running so fast and it's got so much in it gets very very hot during operation and I have noticed in some cases that it started throttling down. So um, what I've been doing up to now is plopping on a heatsink like this and it's got a little heat pad on the back of it and I'm just dropping it on there. A little precarious, it does work but I've got to be careful I don't short out other parts of the board here with it because it is aluminum and also it does not uh, stay on and provide protection for the rest of the board. So I reached out to some of my distributors that send me equipment and one of them gave me an option to try. So this is a case for the Raspberry Pi 4 specifically and it's made out of solid aluminum and it's got a couple of fans on that are temperature controlled. So I want to give it a go and see if it keeps this thing cool and allows me to do what I like to do with it. First thing we're going to do is I've got my thermal imaging multimeter here is we're going to fire this up and just see how hot this CPU is getting without any um, heat sink on it or anything like that. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll put it in the case and we'll see how well that works. Should hopefully bring it down I don't know, 10, 20, 30 degrees, depending on how hot this thing is getting after our first test. Um, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, I'll provide, if this is any good, um, which I'm hoping it will be, I'll provide links in the description so you can go get one yourself. You, all of These are all available off Amazon. Um, so let's get to it. Okay, so I've powered up the Raspberry Pi. Um, the black tape that's on top of the CPU chip is to uh, normalize its emissivity because it's got a very shiny surface. And so if I try and measure the temperature, for instance, if you look at the Bluetooth Wi-Fi adapter here, it will be completely reading wrong. You see, if I look at this, you can see that the Bluetooth adapter is actually showing freezing cold. And in fact, reality is it's not. Um, so the CPU there, if I actually take off the tape, just to show you, right now it's reading like it's cold, but it actually isn't. Right, so it's saying that it's about 29 degrees. If I put the tape back on again just to stop the reflections of the colder things that are around it. And now if I measure it, you'll see Sorry about the reflections from the lights above. Get down there. It's actually sitting at about 50 degrees C. Now this Raspberry Pi is doing absolutely nothing right now, but it is sitting at 50 degrees centigrade, which is quite warm. So let's uh, see if we can figure out a way of getting some temperature readings easily and uh, see what happens when we start putting things like heat sinks on it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just started playing a video from one of my um, recent YouTube channel videos about LVDS screens and stuff like that. It really doesn't matter what it is, just one of mine. And that's just going to load up the GPU and the CPU while it's playing that um, full screen 1080p. And I've got a little script in here that all it does is it reads the temperature from the CPU and displays it on the screen. You can see here, um, without any heat sink on, it's already up to about 65 degrees on both of those, the GPU and the CPU in there. And if you look at it with the thermal camera, let's just get this turned back on again. So I'm going to let that run just for a few minutes to warm up a bit more. I think it may be already about as hot as it's going to get there with that load. Oh, while well, I'm waiting for that. Just put my finger on the heatsink 
sorry, on the top of the can. I certainly couldn't leave it there. It's uh, uncomfortable to touch. You definitely want to pull it away. I mean, I can resist it for a little while, but not for long. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here now. So you can see there, we're actually reading about 63, 64, almost, on the outside. And that actually agrees with what the um, internal sensors are saying as well, 63, 64 degrees. So let's, um, I guess we can just use that internal sensor now. Don't need that anymore. Let's take this tape off. And we'll drop this heatsink on and see what a difference that makes. Okay, so right away we'll do it. So we're already down to 49, 50 degrees. So it's brought it down by about, well, very rapidly, 10 degrees. It probably will creep up again once this thermal mask, because right now it was cold room temperature. It's probably going to creep up a bit um, now that it's attached. Yeah, sitting at 47. We'll give that a couple of minutes and see where it gets to. Okay, I guess we've given it a long enough to see where it's up to. So it's up to about 49. It's a bigger heat mass. So it is going to be taking its time to creep up. And it might actually even stabilize after that. So you can see here, even just a simple... Uh, little heat sink sitting on top of the CPU with a bit of connectivity to it can make a difference of, uh, you know, 14, 15 degrees centigrade lower from ambient. And the ambient in here right now is about 22 degrees. What I want to do now then is we'll get out this case that was sent to me by MageDoc. Um, and I'll provide the links to it. It's actually through one of their distributors. And we'll give it a go and see what difference this makes. So, you know, right now we're sitting at about 51 degrees. You can see it is creeping up a little bit. Um, so this case we have, let me just move these out the way for a moment so I can show you. It uh, comes all pretty much pre-assembled. You get a screwdriver with it, which is always nice. Rubber feet, uh, quick manual. So Raspberry Pi 4 CNC aluminum case with dual fans. And it has a uh, control panel as well. Apparently you can touch it to turn the fans on and off if you want to. So in here is what we've got that's arrived. So you can see there, it looks very nicely built, quite hard, solid aluminum case, um, mounting for putting it on a panel or on a wall. Um, there, so you can put a screw through, slot it on, um, nicely marked TFT. My fingers have already been on this before, that so excuse the extra fingerprints. All marked on the edge for what there is, USB 2, USB 3 network, the HDMI port, the AV port, and the power. And on the top, we've got slot cut out for the GPIO header, uh, another slot for the um, PoE, power over Ethernet, if you're going to use it. A couple of very small 5 volt fans connected for the 5 volt rail. And we have here a touch panel that allows us to apparently to turn on and off the fans. And apparently, they will speed up and slow down depending on the temperature. So let's have a little open it up. And we will uh, see what's inside. I don't expect there to be much. By the way, this screen that I'm using just behind here, this one here, it's a 1080p portable panel from MageDoc. Um, had that probably a couple of years ago now. It's a 1080p, as I said, but it's got USB-C input. You can put, if you've got a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 with video, then absolutely everything can go through that video connection. Um, if you don't, then it's got a standard HDMI connector on it and a um, USB type 
micro, sorry, micro USB connector as well, so you can provide it power and things like that. Okay, so here's the inside of this. You can see, I think, if I bring it up in front of the camera, uh, that's been milled, CNC'd, out of a solid piece of aluminum. You can see just faintly the milling marks there. And then we've got the other piece here, which has been milled as well out of a solid piece. Two fans mounted, a little touch controller to turn it on and off and things. So let's get this connected up and see how well it works. Okay, here it is, all boxed up. I can see, makes a really nice tight fit on the Raspberry Pi. Um, GPIO headers are still available. You do need the 5 volt connection here for the two fans. And right now I've just left the fans off. A um, little touch, you can turn them on and off here. So I've turned them off for the moment just so that I can set up the same scenario that we had before uh, and let it warm up a bit before um, we turn the fans on and see how well this does. We'll see how well it does without it first and then we'll see how well it does with it. So, thoughts on this box while we're waiting. Well, we've got cutouts for the camera for a screen. Um, obviously the little touch panel here so you can turn the fans on and off. Um, easy access for the GPIO and certainly providing a lot of good quality protection for that board there. Everything seems to fit very, very well. And I don't think this thing is, is very expensive either. Maybe uh, $20, $30 or something like that. Anyway, we'll have to have a look. I'll post the price up in post-edit. Um, that'll be just as of November 2019. But uh, I guess this would probably make an, a nice inexpensive present for somebody that might have a Raspberry Pi 4 that wants to put a case on it and protect it, but still have easy access. Yeah, we're up to 56. You can see we're creeping up here now. So, let's just turn on this fan. We don't need to wait for it to get all the way out. What we're looking for is to see if it comes back down again nicely. So, we'll turn on the fans and see where we get to. And I can't hear those fans running. I can see that they're running, and you probably can too, if I turn them back off again. All right. Um, just see what we're doing. We're back down to 53 already. From what I was reading about this, it says it will spool up on temperature. Yeah, it says right here, the fan boot when power on, the fan speed depend on temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the speed. Maximum speed, 6,000 RPM. So, a little bit of chinglish there, I'm sorry, but I find a lot of translated manuals have a little bit of um, ambiguity in them as far as when they're reading them through but you can usually get the gist of what they mean which is fine so let's just leave this running for a minute it should be cooling it off so if I just lift that up um, that'll allow a bit of better air through, flow from the bottom just in case it goes all the way around I don't think it does because it would have to Get around the edge of the board and that's a very tight fit in that case but nevertheless so we're still sitting at 50 oh, coming down to 49 I guess the question is when it gets warmer will it bring it down again now we did see that the heat sink was already up to I think a little over 50 degrees I'll have to go back and have a look in the video again so you can see this is already providing as much dissipation of the heat coming off of that CPU as it did before with the big heat sink uh, this thing here so that's good to know provide some awesome protection looks rather nice and yeah this is sitting around 50 so that is quite nice. I'll have to do some more playing with it. I'm not going to take out more time in this video with it. Um, if I do find anything wrong with uh, it not increasing the fan speeds when things get warmer, I'll post some um, edits and something in the comments as well to let you know. But right now it seems to be doing its job quite nicely. It's kept it 15 degrees below um, I think roughly 15 degrees below where it got to before 
it doesn't really need to be trying to drive it anymore at the moment because it's sitting at 50. So we'll have to see. Uh, if I turn the fan back off again, we'll let it um, warm up again. Yeah, it's already jumping up to 52, 51. Yeah, it's already creeping back up again, 53. Yep, there's no actual physical contact with the metal case. So there's some of these aluminum cases you can get, um, they do actually have a physical contact to the GPU and the CPU chip, um, which would help dissipate the heat into the case as well. Uh, this one is going for the um, forced air cooling solution, which is a nice alternative. You know, it means you're not touching the board and risking shorting things out. Um, and the fans seem to be doing a reasonably good job. So, build quality is good. The assembly is trivial. Um, it does seem to work. Um, would I buy any more of these? I probably would. I might look at something that might actually have a physical contact or bring it further down from um, 50 degrees, but 50 degrees is perfectly fine operationally. So I'll dig out some more um, stress tests that would really drive this into um, overheating normally and shutting down thermal shutdowns and we'll see what it does. Um, but I'll report back on that in another video or just in the comments. So. That's sort of a quick review of the Alduino Raspberry Pi 4 case and cooling solution. Um, as I said, this was sent to me for free, but nobody paid me to do this review. I needed something for this, and MageDoc was asking me to review some of their screens. This is obviously one of their older screens right here that I've had for a while. I have the current new version of this screen and I also have a smaller 10-inch uh, screen. Both uh, the 10-inch one I've asked for for trying with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's not high res but it is 10-inch and it's uh, I can't remember the resolution anyway. You'll, you'll see. Uh, it's got speakers and everything else in it as well just like this one does. Uh, and the other one that I've got is another 1080p IPS screen, exactly the same as this from the front, but it's got a uh, aluminum case. So it basically it's an upgraded version, much more polished, much newer. Those are coming in the next video, so we'll see you there. Anyway, that's all for this. I don't want to make it any longer than I have to. It shouldn't be a long video, so we'll leave it there.